God is good all the time, all the time. Wow, what, what an incredible, incredible illustration of believers staying in the ground of the young people here doing that incredible skit, that play. Can we thank them one more time? Absolutely marvelous, marvelous. You may be seated. Pastor Tommy, Luke, Angel, it has been an absolute honor to have come here on this very stage a couple months ago. And when you asked me to come here and be part of the Dream Conference, I am so honored to have been able to say yes and come tonight. I don't know who you are and I don't know if you've ever been to the Dream Conference before, but let me tell you, if you ain't yet exactly where God wants you to be and you are saved, but you're not engaged, our prayer as a church as to why this conference is annually held is that for you to understand if you believe in God, that He can use a man without arms and legs to be His hands and feet, that when God doesn't give you a miracle, He'll use you to be a miracle. And let me tell you, we ain't here as believers just trying to figure out what year we can be a little bit in more stability and a little bit more predictability and a little less persecution, but us understanding that we are here to engage when God calls you to stand in front of the gates of hell and redirect traffic, it gets a little hot sometimes. And so if you're a believer, I want you to know you're not here on earth to sip a pina colada. You're here to actually engage. Can you say engage? Yes. To engage in your local community. And it's awesome to be here with, with um. Uh, all the Barnett family and Aubrey, love you and your hubby. I love you so much. God bless you. God bless you, young generation. I am not born in 1882. Um, I'm not, I'm pretty short for my age, but I'm, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, um, I am born in 1982 and I, I don't feel old and I don't feel young. You want to know what I am? I'm ageless. You want to know why? Because it's just a number. And let me tell you, even if I'm 99, for as long as I have air in my lungs, I will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that video is just a snippet of the ministry of Life Without Limbs, uh, which I, at age 19 in 2002, I felt the Lord move me into ministry and, ge uh, and, and be ordained a, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ at age 19. And it was the same year that Matthew Barnett came to Sydney Conference Hillsong and God infused faith in me that if they can purchase a, tw a, a, a crazy uh, hospital that, that needs $21 million worth of renovations for a Dream City LA center, then why can't God use a man without arms and legs to be his hands and feet? So I wanna say, we love you, the Barnett family. I love you, Tommy. God bless you. And Dream City Church all across America is sprouting out and uh, I, I'm so blessed to have traveled 78 countries on the 6th of March for 10 days. We're doing four countries, one of which I'll be with a uh, Hungarian president and prime minister and government and preach the gospel on national television without any advertising interruption across the whole nation. And I'll tell you right now, I have to say this in thread of what the young people just did on here. Let me tell you that I, uh, I have officially, I want you to understand that America is not the only one being attacked. In fact, if you need inspiration, hi Wendell, good to see you. I was just at your church this week, God bless you. Um, but if you need some inspiration where God can turn, right, uh, 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 understanding what the enemy tried to use for bad, God can turn into good. I'll tell you right now, America, listen, this is not the time for revival. This is a time for repentance. And I know we're here to talk about people who don't know God. I'll get to you in a second. But can I just talk to my brothers and sisters for a second, right? I want you to actually understand that the EU has slapped the wrists of Hungarian government 
for using government money to publish pro-life, pro-family campaigns, TV, and billboards, and radio programs. And do you know what has happened in that nation? Divorces have gone down, suicides gone down, bullying's gone down, uh, anxiety's gone down, depression's gone down. And they're asking me to go and speak in front of 19 prime ministers and the media of all of Europe this September to say, as for Hungary as a nation, we unapologetically and humbly, confidently stand on the Word of God. Anyway, I am so blessed to be with you tonight. Uh, put your hand up if you've never heard me speak face to face real quick. <gasps> Whoa, hi, awesome. Um, I am so blessed to be with you tonight. Um, I wanna quickly tell you that as I was raised in a Christian home, can I just tell you, don't ever be a Christian because of Christians, you won't be Christian for long. And I never wanted to be a Christian because my family were Christian. No, I actually hated God, so much so that I didn't talk to Him for five years, from age eight to 12, because I knew that I had no limbs, but I didn't think it was such a big deal until I went to school, and people looking at me, and these kids ask me, you know, what happened, and I say, cigarettes, and... Uh, I go home and I say, what happened? And, and my parents say, well, we don't know what happened. I'm like, what do you mean you don't know? Well, we don't know. But I said, but why? Why me? And then we don't know. But God knows. So ask him. So I said, hey, Dios, que pasó? <laughs> what is up? Where are you? And then you hear about the love of God and you hear about the power of God. How many things can God do? Hello, church. How many things can God do? Awesome. Can you turn me down? Because I feel like I'm deafening people with my screaming and I'm not turning my screaming down, okay? I'm actually going to go up. So turn me down a little bit. But I'll tell you right now, in my life, thank you. In my life, I want you to know that so many times in our life, we don't know why. And then he doesn't speak. Have you, do you know what I'm talking about? And so what do you do? And you go to the Bible and the Bible says that God can do all things and God can do miracles and he's a loving God and, and he sees my tears. Tears are a language that God understands. Do you know in America that one in three girls in America up until age 17 have been sexually abused? Do you know that one out of five Boys in America up till age 17 have been sexually abused. Do you know that America is the leading human trafficking nation in the world with half a million trafficked children? And actually in Texas, human trafficking has, I, I say Texas because I'm Texan now. Human trafficking, yeah. I come from the United States of Texas. But I'll tell you, man, Texas, listen to me. We got a sleeping church. We got a crippled church. We got a, we got a church in Texas with the tail between their legs. Because we can't talk about the wall. We can't talk about pro-life. No, listen, you have to be Christian and vocal about justice for the unborn and the born, the half a million foster kids and adopting kids that are waiting for a, for a family. And in Texas, sevenfold, 700% 7 in 24 months of human trafficking has happened in Texas. You can't, you can't talk about being pro-life without talking about the foster care and the adoption. You can't talk about all that stuff without talking talking about human trafficking, and you can't talk about human trafficking without talking about security, and yes, pro-migration, but pro-security. And it's, there's biblical structures for how a nation is run, and it's not political. When a school board opens up in your, in your city, don't just, you know, cross your arms and, you know, let's, let's report what's bad is going on in the world. No, when a school board position opens to actually make a difference, it might take a little bit more than praying. 
it actually might take a little bit more than praying. You know what that is? It's when a school board position opens, God's like, so are you going to go? Who of your church is going to go and flip the school board? Not just one person. Who 100 of the church are going to flip this? It is not political. This is about understanding that we as Christians believe that God has hope for all of us and our nation. And for me, I look at the Bible and I say, God, why? Why is this happening to our country? Why is this happening in the world? Why do I have no arms and legs? And some people will never come to God in faith. Number one reason, because of Christians. And I want you to know, if Christians have ever hurt you, I am sorry. The second most reason why people don't give their life to God is because if He's a good God, then why can't He heal my body? Why are there bad things happening? And as I read the Bible, I learned that disabilities and sickness and death and cancer did not exist according to Genesis until Adam and Eve fell into sin. This is not God's kingdom on earth. This is the devil's dominion and is not the roaring lion, but he roars like a lion to imitate the lion of Judah, seeking who he can destroy, kill, and steal. You know what God can just, what, what God allows sometimes? Ready, ready, ready? Sometimes he lets Christians die. Have you heard of this? <laughs> Why? Because this earth is not heaven. We are a citizen of heaven passing through. And one glad morning, when this life is over, we're going to fly away. Just a few more weary days ahead and I'll fly away. And when I fly away like my dad did, like my uncle did, like my cousin did, like my cousin's baby boy did, yes, God can heal cancer, but Christians die of cancer. Why? Because death eventually comes to our physical beings. Why? Because there is so much more in heaven waiting for us. And here on earth... When you believe in eternal life, because you actually believe in the reversal of death, which is the power of the resurrection, where only one person resurrected from the grave, and only one person was fully God and fully man, and only one person said that no one comes to the Father but through me, and only one person said that your good works will do nothing. It is my blood and the power of the resurrection. The only one that when his body was dead, he didn't go to heaven. His spirit went to hell. Look at the Bible. When Jesus' body was in the tomb, Jesus went to hell and he had a speech. And he took the keys of hell. And do you know what that means? My king holds the keys of hell. And he will not let hell prevail. He will not let hell prevail. He's not going to force everyone to believe in Him. He gives us free will. Adam and Eve had free will. And in that free will, if God didn't allow the serpent in the Garden of Eden, then Adam and Eve would never have had a choice. Thus, they're in not exercising free will. Are you with me? So we understand that there is good, there is evil. We understand that, first of all, this disability did not come from God. There is nothing good about having no limbs. I'll swap you right now. Now I have a pair of shoes in my closet just in case God gives me arms and legs. And I tell you, I believe in my God, not just because I've seen, you know, miracles. I've also seen demons, man, walking through my hotel room. Not just in Africa, in San Francisco, California. And Californian doctors said that my own back had a miracle that medically unexplainably, my back went from hollow into full and they've never seen that before. And I've 
had the privilege of getting to know Luke and Angel and what Dream Center is doing. And they've seen miracles. And the only reason why these things are happening through the church is because we actually have believed, not just because we believe for the sake of believing, we've actually seen and tasted that the Lord is good and real. And we can have faith for miracles. First of all, physical miracles. Yes, in Jesus' name. If you have cancer right now, in Jesus' name, be healed. If you have sickness or diseases in your body, in Jesus' name, be healed. In Jesus' name, be healed. Hallelujah. We serve the God of miracles. But I also hold my hands open and say, God, if you don't give me a physical miracle, thank you for the greatest miracle of all, which is eternal life. And you've given me peace, and you've given me joy, and you've given me truth. This world can give you affirmation. This world can give you money to fill the beast of greed and pride and lust in you. You can have all the money, drugs, sex, alcohol, pornography, fame, and fortune. If you put your happiness in temporary things, your happiness will be temporary. But come to the fount of life where you thirst no more. You got a pornographic addiction, you can't get out of it on your own. You fulfill only for a moment that chemical reaction in your brain, and then guess what happens tomorrow? You're thinking about the next time you're going to masturbate. Do you know that the biggest production of pornography is Gen Z? Did you know that? Self-produced pornography is Gen Z today. I want you to understand we're not just praying for a Bible. We need to come back to the basics of righteousness and say we must come back to God. We must repent. We must. We must. If not now, when? And we know that money, drug, sex, and all that stuff, it doesn't fulfill. You don't need your church to affirm your value. You've got the Bible. Ooh, you're ugly. Well, who says that? Yeah. It's the devil. Do you know what you do to the devil? <laughs> Your father left you, his father left you, you're always just going to be your father. Your parents were this, your parents never did that, you're never going to do anything. You're not going to surmount to anything, you're never going to be, blah, blah, blah. shut up. You want to know why God gives me a foot? To crush the serpent's head. The doctors told my parents, no affirmation about me. Oh, he's just going to be a vegetable and he's not going to walk. Nineteen ninety four, my parents tried to migrate to California and the immigration lawyer said, Because you have a son that's disabled, he will be seen as a burden on welfare and society of America. And guess what happens? I come here on a work visa. I get my own green card. They call me an alien of extraordinary talent. I then sponsor my parents, I sponsor my sister, I sponsor my brother. God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. It is the God we serve, not because of me, not because of my strength. Oh, Nick, he's the positive. Shut up. Oh, just come to God and he will bless you. Bless. Shut up. Yes, will God bless you? Yes. Are we all supposed to be rich in money? No, my treasures aren't here. I couldn't care less how much is in my bank account. I got kicked out of a big bank of America. They gave me a letter. 
They froze my credit cards, froze my debit cards, froze my credit line. They gave me a letter. We reviewed who you are as a customer, and we don't want anything to do with you. Go find another bank, or else we'll take your money. April 2019, in America, third largest bank in America. So what happens when a child of God who is humbly confident that the Lion of Judah is with me? Do you know what happens when you get kicked out of a bank? He may just cause that limbless son of his adopted. I'm your family. I'm your half-brother. Adopted. <laughs> Do you know what God can do when his child gets kicked? Son, don't worry. Just start another bank and call it Pro-Life Bank. I want you to know that if, if, if God could use me, God can use you. If God can, can, can heal my heart though, I want you to know it's not about positivity. Well, yes, it is. No, it's not. Positivity is not the coping mechanism. It's just like prosperity is your coping mechanism. If your pastor says, give your tithing, give your offerings, and serve, and there's no way that God can't bless you with a new car. Get a job. You got arms and legs? Get a job. Learn how to save. You are not dreaming big. Get a job and make so much money that you give someone else a car. That's my God. We have a Gen Z of, oh, if I just get what I want, when I want, how I want it, that's a generation of entitlement. That's a generation of pride. That's a generation of me, 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 because they got everything. My kids don't get everything. My nine-year-old. Do you know what he, he's now 10, you know what he calls himself? A thousand air. <laughs> he earned $2,000. What 10 year old do you know earned two grand? Second, second, he gave half of his wealth away. To who? To the homeless in Dallas. Why? Because I told him? No. You see, it's us. My son forgives his enemy because he sees daddy forgiving people who he knows is not the enemy. He loves God because he sees his dad love God. He knows what a husband is because daddy takes mommy out on a date without the kids once a week. He tells people about Jesus because he sees daddy telling people about Jesus. It's about you, me, repenting and having revival inside. And when you do, he blesses, man. Yeah, he'll bless. I want you to know that this world can give you stuff, but it's nothing. What I have is hope and truth. It's all I need. I'm the richest man on earth, man. Are you kidding me? Hey, I want you to know that in your life, you will hope that you hope that you hope you have a good life one day. Let me tell you, this is human nature. Everyone say human nature. You see like the 9, 10, 11 year olds, they're like, oh, I can't wait to be a teenager. Why? Because it's going to be better. They become a teenager, oh, I don't know what's going on. My friends, they're backstabbing me. No one understands me. I hate myself. I can't wait to graduate from high school. Then everything's going to be better. Ah. 
And you get there and you're freaking out because now you've got to get to college. If I could just get to college and everything's going to be okay, you get to college and is everything okay? No. It sucks. And then you've got the pressure to actually get a job. Oh, God, I hope that actually what I've studied for, for that job actually exists by the time I'm graduated. I didn't even know what's going on right now. And you then finally get your job. And you look at your boss. And you look at God. And you're like, what? Him? He's the devil's nephew. I thought you loved me. I thought we were good. Oh, no, no, no. As soon as I get married, then everything's going to be okay. Oh, oh. I mean, do I need to convince anybody? Hello. Listen to me. If you ain't happy in Jesus, single. Trust me. Those are the married people clapping. <laughs> so what is it? For me, it was arms and legs. Chris, can I have you play keys? I'd I play keys, but I'm not warmed up yet. <laughs> we got lots of time, but I want him up early. For me, when we, as human beings, think about what we hope for, let me say a sentence. When you hoped, sorry, when you hope filled, you don't have to be hopeful. Listen, we all have a disability, and you know in your own heart, you can't heal your own heart. You can't drown out those voices in your head. That guilt, that shame, that Loneliness, that brokenness will be there until you are rescued and healed. And my disability really was my broken heart. And it was at age 15 that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Why? Because he finally answered my why. John chapter 9, a man was born blind and they asked Jesus, why? Why was he born that way? Jesus said, it was done so that the works of God would be revealed through him. And he spits in the dirt, puts mud on the blind man's face. And it changed my life, not because I saw another miracle. That's not what changed me. What changed me was imagining me as the blind man. Ready? Here's the first prop. Blind. Hearing the conversations and then hearing someone go, Khtum. And someone approaching you with muddy hands, giving you a facial you did not want. Now imagine, the blind man could have said, who are you, what do you want, what's your plan? And then I'll tell you if I trust you. Let me rewind. What's your plan? And then I will tell you when I trust you. Whoa, sound familiar? Isn't it true that if God gave me the entire blueprint of how He's going to use me up until age 40, I would first die of shock? Look at this photo for shock. This is my, my wife. We've been married now for 
11 years. Her name's Kanae. It was love at first sight. I looked at her. She looked at me. I couldn't feel my legs. Look, look at this next photo. Our four biological children. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Here's the next photo. Look at this shock. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. You know what he's asking me to do? To go back again? Going to go to his house, have a barbecue? No joke, that's what he said. And he said he wants me to actually speak mandatorily to every single military and school student in the whole nation. Shock. If God outlaid it, I would first die of shock. But if he gave me the plan, then where is the room for faith? Why are you hungering to actually know the will of God instead of delighting in believing yet not seeing? And working with what you do know. You haven't got an answer from God from your prayer. What was the last thing he told you? Let's go back to that. Are you reading the Bible from Monday to Sunday? Are you actually honoring God in your relationship with your girlfriend? Are you actually telling people about Jesus Christ? Let's go back to what He told you to do. Has He not given you enough church? His Son? Who am I that I need God to tell me His plan? Who am I? Nobody. My righteousness, righteousness is filth and feces. That's Nick. The best of him is dung. The best of me is dung. And I'm a servant of the Most High. When you are freed of the prison gates of sin and death, then your heart is thanking Him all day long. Remember what God has done. Come back to that first love if you knew Him. And I want you to know that I realized at age 15, God, I don't want my plan. I want your plan. I don't want my strength. I want your strength. Please come into my life. I don't want all this sin. I don't want those lies. I want to turn away from sin. And I want to live for you. I know there is something more. I know that you have a plan for me. God, I want you to help me to even pray for the people in my family. I don't know how to fix them, but I know you can. God, I don't know how to even fix my head, but you can. Help me to read over my life the promises of God that all things come together for the good for those who love Him, who have been called according to His purposes, for I can endure all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not achieve all things through Christ. It's not achieve. It's endure all things through Christ who strengthens me, including one day being named, one day possibly as a domestic terrorist in the United States of America, and they'll ask you, will you renounce your faith in Jesus Christ or not? If not, then go to prison. My grandfather's were there in former Yugoslavia. The military took over my mom's home at six years old, said, this is not your home. They fled communism, Yugoslavia, in 1960s. We've learned about it to the death. And yes, I've had a grenade in my house. FBI bomb squad with a pin. Yes, we've had a spying drone. Yes, to a lot more. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, 
for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He prepares a feast in the face of my enemy. Does that not mean, Nick, that you ever get depressed? Oh, let me tell you, I do. And I went through counseling in February 2021 because a lot was going on there. You don't have to do this alone. That's why we are a family in the church. But how will I know if you're bleeding if you don't tell me? I think one of the greatest faults of the church is we don't share what's really going on. And before, before you give up, let me tell you on any part of your life, don't ever give up on God. He will never fail you. And He will take your wounds and change them into battle scars. I am battle tested. Why? I know him and he knows me and I know how much he loves the world and I know how much he loves you you're here tonight because he loves you he wants to heal your heart he wants to renew your mind and tonight the dream conference asked me to come tonight to ask you sitting in your seat do you know him Come to God. Your strength is not enough. Your plans will fail. Your righteousness will fail. People will fail. You, everything will fail. But God. And I want to ask you, are you quite done yet? Trying to do things on your own strength, in your own mind, Will you surrender? I know why I'm not Islam. I know why I'm not Buddhist. I know why I'm not Shinto. And I know why I'm not atheist. Do you know what you are? Can we tear a, a page out of the Bible? You're either Christian, believing in the Bible, or you believe the Bible with every single word. You can't make a cocktail of your own religion, because guess what's going to happen? Eventually, you'll morph your religion into something else. I'll take a little bit of this, little bit of that, little bit of that. You either believe Jesus died on the cross for you, or you don't. You believe that he raised from the dead or you don't. You believe that you're either trying to muster up works for righteousness or you surrender and saying, God, forgive me. I can never earn my way to heaven. You're either standing on the rock or the quicksand. Choose. Choose tonight. If tonight was your last night, do you know where you would wake up? Oh, you will be resurrected. You know that? You'll be res All of us are going to be resurrected. You know that? But some of us will be resurrected and go to hell, and some of us will be resurrected and go to heaven. We'll be resurrected. There'll be judgment. If I lie once, I'm a liar. If I steal once, I'm a thief. 
If I look lustfully at a woman, I've already committed adultery in my own heart. If I hate you, I've killed you in my own heart. I'm an adulterous, thieving murderer, according to God. Give me two three-year-olds and give them one toy and you'll see sin. Will you come to God and say, God, come into my life, forgive me, change me. My history is His story and yours ain't done. Yours ain't done. Your past will not determine your future. It's this decision that will. And right now, I wanna get rid of all these little temporary fences here. And right now in a moment, I wanna call you forward to say, you know what? God, if you have a plan for me, I wanna know that plan. God, if you have a balm for my heart that actually heals my heart of the wounds of the past. God, if your spirit can actually calm me and renew my mind to the point that I actually do not have the crippling fear that I have today and the depression and the anxiety and the shame and the guilt of my past that carries along with me. God, if you're real, I want to know you. If you love me, I want to know you. If you have a plan for me, I want to know your plan. I don't want what I want anymore. I want to come and drink of the fount of life to never thirst again. Yes, there will be ups and downs, my friend. Yes, there will be. But God is with you. And He promises He'll never leave you. And not because of your actions, despite you, He will still fulfill His perfect plan in you. Despite you. So right now from the front to the back in the balconies, if you know that you, you're feeling your heart move, and I'm sorry I've gone a little over time, but listen to me real quick, ready? God is calling you and He stands at the door and knocks. This is not a call for you to recommit your life to Jesus Christ. This is not a recommitment. You are not walking with God. You don't know if you're saved. You don't even know exactly what it means to have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. And tonight you want to make a decision to say, I declare that Jesus died for me. And I declare He's the Son of God. And I declare tonight that He's going to be my Savior for the rest of my life. And I believe in Him. And He's going to come into my life. Listen. Oh, I don't want to give my life to Jesus Christ yet. What if I say the F word tomorrow? Am I going to go to hell? Hell no. He didn't come for the clean and the well. He came for the unclean and the sick and the broken and depressed and anxious and the addicted and the afflicted. He came for you. He came for you. And if you've ever asked God, God, show me your love. Show me a sign. He has sent you tonight to hear His kindness. He is the miracle speaking into your heart right now. And so right now from the front to the back, I want to in a moment call you forward. Why call you forward? Yeah, you can say your prayer in your chair. Yes, God's going to uh, heal your prayer in your chair. But if you can't make a faith decision in a church building, then how are you going to expect to make a faith decision outside the building? That's why I call you forward. And when it's not gonna get weird, I'm not gonna lay hands on you or anything. So right now, if you know that you know that you know that you need to give your life to Jesus Christ, don't wait for the first person. Stand to your feet in Jesus' name and come on down right now. And when you see someone coming forward, Clap them on down. Right now, you need Jesus in your life. Stand, stand, and come on down. 
run down. Come on, from the balconies, I'm going to wait for you. We're going to wait for every single person. You know you need God. He's going to take away your depression and your anxiety. He's going to fill you with His peace and His love. Church, church, one second, one second, church, church, one second, church. Can you all stand up and shimmy back against your chair so people can walk by you, okay? So they don't have to jump over you. Right now, if you know that you need to make your life right with Jesus Christ, I want you to right now come forward, come forward, come forward. Let's clap them on down, church. Let's clap them on down. Let's clap them on down. Let's clap them on down. Come on. You know you need to give your life to Jesus Christ. He's called you. He's brought you here. He's brought you here. He's going to heal you. He's going to redeem you. Come on down, come on down, come on down, come on down. Listen, 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 listen. One second, church, one second, one second. Listen, if you're thinking of thinking about it, stop thinking about it. And if you, oh, I don't want to, you know, go alone. Ready? Here's the trick. Ready? Simply turn to the person next to you and say, hey, I really want to go up there, but I don't want to go alone. Will you come with me? And guess what they're going to say? Yes. Listen to me. This is here, the final call. Move down now and surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and bring a friend now. Last call, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on down church, come on. Let's give God a shout of praise. There's a lot more people coming. There's a lot more people coming. There's another five, there's another five. We're gonna wait for you on the balconies. Come on down, come on down, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, church, let's give God a shout of praise. Amen. Look, they're coming from the balcony. One, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. We're going to pray while people are still coming. Let's pray for Arizona and America. Lord, we thank you for America. We thank you for the churches. We thank you for Arizona. And we thank you, Lord, that you would do a mighty, mighty, mighty thing in our nation. Father, we thank you for Dream Conference. We thank you, Lord, for the fires that are going to ignite and ministries that are going to be birthed from this conference where, God, you're going to move your people who do know you to then be your hands and feet like never before. You're going to give them your dreams. You're going to give them your vision. And, Father, we thank you that everything we have is yours. And we ask ask God that you would move the church to repentance. Father, we thank you that you would move us in your perfect will. Lord Jesus, we thank you that tonight is another testament that the Holy Spirit, you are real Holy Spirit. You are here in our midst and it's in our, uh, our worship that you are coming here to be with us and ministering to the broken hearts and healing sicknesses and diseases in Jesus' name and healing people of depression and anxiety in Jesus' name, of mental illness and instability in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you would come through for all of our brothers and sisters who are praying for a physical miracle. But Lord, we thank you that more than a physical miracle, the greatest miracle of all is knowing you and our souls being restored and rescued and saved. And so so Father, we thank you for these people up the front. Bless them in Jesus' name. We thank you for these young hearts and old hearts who've given their lives to you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, that you would bless them in Jesus' name. Father, give them faith, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you would give them roots in you, Lord Jesus, as that seed now is planted, that they would be planted by the streams of the living waters, that they would learn how to pray, they'd learn how to live, they'd learn how to talk with you and walk with you. Father, we thank you that you never give up on us, Lord Jesus. Jesus, you've already done all that you can. And Lord, we thank you that you died for us and now we live for you. Father, we thank you for these people up the front. Bless them in Jesus' name. If you're up the front, can you please repeat after me? Say, dear God, I come to you today and I thank you for loving me. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. I confess I am a sinner and I don't deserve your love, but you love me unconditionally just as I am. So God, tonight, forgive me, come into my life and help me to turn away from sin. 
Teach me to pray. Show me how to live. And give me faith to trust you one day at a time. Heal my heart. Wipe away my tears. Thank you, Lord, for your comfort. Fill me, Holy Spirit, right now, right now, right now, and right now. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, God, that today is the day I gave my life to you, my whole life. I give it to you. Thank you, Lord, that you'll never leave me. And thank you, God, you have a plan for me. I want to know you more and more each and every day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's give God a shout of praise. I, um, young people, I want you to look at the screen right now and I want you to get your phone out and then look at me. When you get your phone out, I want you to look at me. I want you to look at my face. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And no matter how good you feel right now, tomorrow morning you might wake up and say, okay, what do I do now? Well, we wanna help you with the next steps. If you don't have a home church, Welcome to your home church. We love you. God bless you. We love you. And if you text us this on the screen, you're going to get seven videos of me to you that you will not find on the internet. It's especially designed for people over the next seven days who've said this prayer, who started your relationship with Jesus Christ. We wanna encourage you over the next seven days, number one, to encourage you to not give up. And then this church will also wanna say, hey, how can we pray for you? Not how can we get from you, how can we pray for you? How can we serve your family? And so if you have a phone right now, see that? You can either text right now to the number 51237, the word Jesus, or you can scan the QR code, or there are volunteers here with cards and pens right here. Volunteers, if you don't want to do the text, there's cards and pens. Give us your contact info. Why? Because we want to pray for you. We're committed to your commitment to Jesus Christ, and we love you, love you so much. So make sure you got that, and make sure that if you do not have a home church, come back on Sunday and welcome home. We love you so, so much. We want to help you. Tell me about it. Stay right here in just a minute. All of you stay here just a minute. Wasn't that a wonderful, wonderful message tonight? Come on, give the Lord a good clap. Pop, pop. And now, thank you so much, Nate. Love you, Tommy. I love you too. And now we're going to introduce this great audience, listen closely, you're now a part of the family of God. Meet your new family. Greet them. Greet your new family. This is, now, give them a good hand. They're your new family now, all right? Give them a good hand. Come on. Respond up here. Oh, that's good. Amen. God bless you. Well, what a great night, and no one can put over like you, Nick. Oh, God's We're so proud of you. Thank you too. God's using you all over the world. And this is a night we won't forget. We're going to leave this place rejoicing here tonight. If you could all just come a little closer to the front. I want to move, especially from the back. I want the praise. I want the worship team to get back there. Awesome. If they can. Tommy, can I just say as well? Yes, you can while they're getting we, ready. We love you so much in the church. And we know how much you have prayed for us. And over the years, how much we've been encouraged. And we just want to encourage the church here. Um, visit our tables at the back. Not for an offering. We have some resources that can help your church 
engage in the more difficult conversations in small group settings and we're equipping this curriculum called hope for the heart curriculum but really it's champions for the brokenhearted if you want to know more about our ministry in how the videos and curriculum to equip your church to talk about the more difficult things please visit the tables at the back champions for the brokenhearted and God bless you um, and your ministry. Thank I you hope so much. you have much. a book. Do you have a book back there? We have books and DVDs and 100% of all the products back there go towards the ministry. And um, if you want to monthly support us, you can join the Circle of Champions and join us on the front line as we continue to take territory for God's kingdom. Oh, take advantage of these resources. Amen. Well, were they able to get back there? Are you there? Okay. So, can you worship with all these people in front of you? We're going to give it a try. Okay. Why don't you all turn around and look at the worship team. Back out here if you can. Come on. Back this way. Give them a little more. Hey, we're kind of playing it by ear tonight. How many realize that? Okay, come right here. Don't fall off. And go ahead. We're going to have it. They're going to lead us in a great worship song, and then uh, you're on your own. While they get ready now, tomorrow morning, I want you to come early. I want you to begin to write down your dream for your church, for your life, for your family, whatever. Put on one of those cards. Have you, have you got one of these green dream cards yet? If not, we'll get it tomorrow morning. And I want you to come early. Get a cup of coffee. Climb up the mountain. And just spend a little time praying. It might be a little, you're talking about a little wet weather, but we've rebuked the wet weather, amen. No, 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 don't hold me up on that. All right, please don't. Okay, dress warm for tomorrow night because we're going to go up the mountain, okay? So come tomorrow morning, get a cup of coffee, go up on the mountain, walk the grounds if you want to, and just pray. If God's doing something in your life, give a good clap offering to God right now. Come on, give a good one. All right? Okay.